Hi, <laughs> it's me, Pete Holmes, and you're watching or listening, hopefully both, to Don't Be Alone with Jay Kogan, which means you're a Koganite. Don't be alone with Jay, Jay Kogan. Welcome to Don't Be Alone with Jay Kogan, where I get really smart and interesting people to come to, on my show and work out my problems because I'm selfish that way. Hopefully, we can grow closer and you and I can grow closer and we can bond. I'm your host, as we say, Jay Kogan. I'm a writer and uh, comedian, performer guy and philosopher. And uh, I want to get closer with you as well as my guests. So if you have a comment or a question or a suggestion, uh, write in to dbajkogan at gmail.com. That's dbajkogan at gmail.com. D-B-A-W-J-A-Y-K-O-G-E-N at gmail.com. I want your questions, I want your comments, and I just want to get to know you better. So let's do that. Today, I'm so thrilled because I have an amazing guest. Pete Holmes is one of my comedy heroes. He is uh, a genius, he's funny, but he also works on a really higher plane. He thinks on a higher plane, and I'm a little envious of it, but I also really dig it. And I, and I dig him. And he was uh, so gracious to come on uh, and to talk about my problem today. And my problem today will be and is trying to do work and keep your life on that higher plane. How do you stop from sort of settling in on stuff? How do you keep writing specifically? You want to write things that are a comedy writer. You want to write things that are really funny and really good and really interesting. And you want to write things that also enlighten the human condition. I know that's high fancy stuff, but that's kind of what you're doing even when you're writing a silly joke. You're trying to do uh, a focus on human behavior and human life. And sometimes you can get lost in the weeds by having a job and having to you know, write something that the network likes or other people like and people please and do all that kind of stuff. How do you, how do you stay true to yourself? And uh, it's a real problem because, you know, people have to work for paychecks and people have to get things done and people have to sell things that other people will buy. And not everything is, not every idea you have is, is going to be loved by everybody. So it's a tricky thing to weave your way creatively through, uh, through the creative community and still keep your higher self up here and keep your creative juices aiming at the best version of you. So we'll talk about that and many, many other things with the great Pete Holmes. Don't be alone with Jay, Jay Kogan. Okay, no, that's fine. I'm I'm texting Conan O'Brien right now to ask you, if he's Jewish. Just say, send the Israeli flag question mark. That's how I do it. I send that text a surprising amount of times per week. Just want to know who's who. Telling me you are half Jew. Are you really texting Jeff yeah. Conan? Jew. True. I feel like Google could have spared this man the disruption. I want to, he'll tell me, he'll know. Conan O'Brien will know whether he's half Jewish or not. He seems so completely Irish. Yeah, but I'm going to Google it and it's going to come up faster because it's in his movie. I think the text was the right move. All right, we'll find out. Because there's that mo movement. Yeah, the movement? In, the movement. Okay. In um, Conan O'Brien Can't Stop, which is a horror movie if you haven't yeah. seen it. <laughs> Pause for laughing. Okay. Uh, JK, it's a thriller. Yeah. But he um, he's talking to some fans, and I've had this happen where like well-meaning, I don't want to side with them. I'm just saying like 18, 19 year old kids yeah. talking to a comedian. Right in this case Conan so someone they admire and they're trying to be funny and they're trying and they and they see comedy and they right. think you're supposed to like shock and so they said uh Jew is a verb okay and Conan uh is very even about it right. but he's like do you know the show that you just enjoyed was produced by my friend Jeff Ross who's right. Jewish and he says and I'm some fraction Jewish okay. it might not be half yeah, he also may have been doing that to shame those people. <laughs> well, I don't know. And that's very Catholic. Yes, so it's now very Catholic. No, he's <laughs> now totally Catholic. To, I so, don't know where we are. All right, anyway, I want to give you a proper hello because we're recording right now. That's fine. That's... Uh, Pete Holmes, one of my comedy heroes, is <laughs> the, sitting. The copy just falls. Yeah, <laughs> not a physical comedy hero. He's never been a physical no, comedy hero not for of his mine. Uh, is sitting here. You're so kind of you to come. I'm a huge fan of your comedy. Thank you, I was Jay. a huge fan of Crashing. Yeah, uh, a huge fan of the. 
weird Batman shorts that you make. Yep. Oh my God. Thank you kindly. Uh, and and uh, one of the reasons why, and you make a great podcast, so I'm stepping into the world of podcasting just now, yeah. well after it's too late. Beyond. That's what it should be called. Jay okay. Kogan, Beyond Too Late. Beyond Too Late, exactly. No chance of this becoming a success. That's what it should be called. Jay I Kogan's No that. Chance. It's, you know, it's it's microclimates. And I'm saying, <laughs> I actually meant that in a positive yeah. way. Like, you find these people, and you will. Yeah. I know you haven't released it yet. No. But when you do, you, there's just going to be people whose your vibe is going to mesh, mesh perfectly. Yeah. And you'll have your audience. And and this sounds defeatist, but even if it were only 100 people. Right. There's no nothing better than a podcast fan. Because they're a fan of you. Yeah, I they're, guess that's, They'll merge and, that's and join with you. So it's not, okay, 100 people. If you get yeah. 100 consistent listeners to this show, which I'm confident, of course you will. It'll be more than that. But it's the quality of those fans. It's the quality. Yeah. So, so is there a difference between a uh, fan of your comedy, of your stand-up, and a fan of your podcast? I've given this a surprising amount of thought, <laughs> which is any thought whatsoever. Right. But if someone says, I love your Batman videos, that's sort of like... If I was a Patreon, that would right. be like level one. Okay. You're only donating $1 right. every three years. Right. And it's not about money. I just mean like that's your level right. of investment. But kind in, of it is about money. It is a little bit about <laughs> Right. It's a little bit about sure. money. Yeah. No, it's not. It's the metaphor. All right. So they're a low level Pete Holmes mm -hmm. person. Right. And this goes with everybody. And meaning every everybody I know in the public eye has an understanding. If someone says, I love Batman, I'm like, okay, you might not know anything about me. You might not even right. know I'm a stand up. You might not even know I'm Batman. And I'm okay with all of that. Mm -hmm. Then there might be someone that says, I uh, love your stand up. Now we're getting warmer. Mm -hmm. You're at the $50 right. okay. level. You're like at right. a, not quite gold, but let's <laughs> say it's a silver sure. level okay. Patreon kind of right. person. And then if someone says, "I," the next one I think is um, crashing. Uh, those might be tied. It actually might go, this is boring. Crashing, then stand up. Then I read your book and then I listen to your podcast. And then only above that is I've listened to every episode of your podcast. Uh, and those are the super fans. Uh, and, and fan is too, it sounds like derogatory. Right, I, no, no. I, I mean, these are like people who deeply resonate Vibe with what with you're you. about. Yes. That's exactly. It's not that, me giving right. them the sweet manna that right. they need. It means I've met someone. If someone says I've listened to every episode of your podcast, I am fully, and I'm not saying this like a politician, I'm fully confident I could go on a road trip with them and have a great time. <laughs> All right. And well, that's good. totally happy but with the, them. But the, uh, but the stand-up fan bought merch. The stand-up fan? Well, I don't really have merch. Sometimes okay. I have merch. I've had merch right. in the past, but I don't, I don't yeah. like doing right. merch. <laughs> but uh, the stand-up fan, uh, I'll take that too. That's, yeah. that's pretty close. All right. Very I good. hate to grade it, but I yeah. guarantee you... Fucking Jared Leto is walking around going like, oh, they like the Suicide Squad. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. He knows the real Jared Leto fans are 30 Seconds to Mars people. You know what I right. mean? Like okay. he's graded it too, I'm sure. The whole point of this podcast for me was exactly what you're talking about. The vibe of vibe vibing with people. Yeah. Because I, I felt like that, me included, the world is a lonely place. Yeah. And... How can we make the world a little less lonely? And why I listen to podcasts, I connect yeah. with people when I listen to podcasts. And then when I have a, a conversation with people who I actually hear on a podcast and, and can yeah. write to them or talk to them, yeah. I feel okay. I'm, I'm I'm involved in a world. You are. Yeah. No, it's the more things change, the more they stay the same. It's like we used to sit around more. Maybe mm -hmm. I'm thinking about like the Wild West. I'm playing sure. Red Dead Redemption. Right. Again. That's so I'm thinking like a saloon. <laughs> sure. You might conversate sure and and connect before a gunfight before of right. course yes of course. every conversation <laughs> presumed right. sure this ends in bloodshed right yeah but now we listen to these conversations that have been recorded and broadcast satellites and internet and wi-fi and all that stuff but really it's just this basic human need to not feel alone and to find your tribe yeah and and podcasting can be really beautiful in that way it reminds me of something seinfeld says seinfeld says when He's in the grocery store. People come up to him and talk to him. And he's like, of course, I was in your living room right. for nine years, yeah. every Thursday or whatever it was. Of course you come up. You see Bono at the grocery store, you leave him alone. That's true. Because you're scared of him or, or there's a reverence. Oh, that's the man that stands up in front of arenas right. and sings. But also Jerry projects talk to me in a grocery store a little bit. If only because you're not sure how is he going to be up for it. Because you yeah. know he'll be like, oh, I don't like this. You know, you know <laughs> right. he's going to shoot you straight. I used to be a doorman at the improv many years ago when yeah. I was uh, but a lad. 
18, 19 years old. Oh, wow. and, and Jerry was performing there and he was the most approachable of all those That's guys. Great. He was yeah. always approachable, yeah. always nice. He's the guy who talked to the doorman yeah. where a lot of people didn't talk to the doorman, you know. It's not just what it is. I was just thinking about this. It's a, it's a self-serving story, but I'm always nice to the people that valet at the comedy store. Mm. Yes. Okay. Bravo, Pete. Right. <laughs> we should all, we should all right. be. Right. But it's because, and what's so offensive about someone who isn't nice? I don't know anybody, but let's assume there are some comics who aren't <laughs> nice. Okay. Or kind. Yes. Like out of their way, kind. Uh, what's, what's offensive? You've never met a comedian, have you? You've never actually met an actual comedian other than yourself. Because uh, <laughs> they're plenty. I mean, I don't know who that you- That are bitter. Who yeah. are you hanging out with? I, yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. know. No, yeah. I'm with you. Okay. All right. Honestly, comedians as a group, right. I can't vouch for all no, of us. No, no. Even as a hang, I don't even mean their behavior or their <laughs> sure. moral, moral character. It's, it's why I stopped doing stand-up comedy. I couldn't well, hang with that group. I vouch for that yeah. decision. Yeah. You didn't need me to validate it, but I am, I am validating <laughs> yeah. it. But anyway, what's offensive about a comedian that's rude to the person parking the cars at the comedy store or rude to the- the MC or whatever it might be, is um, there's a real human value in remembering what it was like. So when I was handing out flyers at the Boston Comedy Club or whatever it was, I could tell you everybody that was nice to me. And, yeah. it, and, and it melts my heart. Of and it was Jim Gaffigan, it was Bill Burr, mm -hmm. it was Mike Birbiglia, it was Dimitri Martin. Right. And, a, and a less fun list that I won't share are the people that were uncaring right. to me. Um, but I don't even, I couldn't really, I'd have to think right. to find them, but I can very Dana quickly. Gould. Dana, Dana Gould, Gould, horrible to you. Dana Gould, you are a piece of shit. <laughs> and if I ever see you, yeah. just know karate sure. is coming your way. Yes, Dana Gould has been a guest on this show. A very, very guest. Dana Gould. I think I just got a text, of a, maybe it's, no, it's not. All right. I, I would have been. I want to find out. Deeply right. impressed. We're going to find out. Uh, Given the climate, I wonder how he's going to take that text. Oh, he's going to be fine. I'm just wondering if he's like, what? It, what are you pulling me right. into? What kind That's of conversation? True. And I'm not trying to start that. I'm yeah, just yeah. saying, no, like, we'll, see, well, we're we're close <laughs> enough. If he, if he oh, has okay. a problem with, if okay. he has a problem with it, I didn't tell know me. you were close. That's yeah. so cool. He was yeah. in my dream last night. Really? Yeah. Okay. Because one time, <laughs> who cares? But one time, I, I was just going to give you a, what my therapist calls a pop up. Sure. Tell me a pop up. Well, the disclaimer was like. Who cares? I, right. I don't want to bore you. No, no, uh, it's good. Blah, blah, blah. No, I don't need a pop up. It's good. That's why I deleted it. Yeah, I closed it. I have good. a pop up blocker. All right, good. Uh, that's what my therapist did. He installed a pop up blocker, nice. and I can just own my feelings. Yeah. I think this is worthy of right? sharing. We were at the Arc Light, my wife and I, and we're seeing Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And uh, in in line in front of us, we quickly noticed the the soft brown leather jacket of Conan O'Brien. <laughs> like, I just, <laughs> it's unmistakable. Right? And then I look up and there it is. Barely look up. We're at mm -hmm. the same height, actually. Anyway, I look and there's his red hair and, and I'm like, this is awesome. This is exactly what I used to dream about. When I, like, I, I'm, I'm in show business because every compass of my inner being, since I knew it was a thing, was pointing towards right. show business. I wanted it I, and I'm enjoying it. All right. So here I am at the arc light. There's Conan. I know Conan. I'm going to the movies, I'm with my wife, all of it's at play, my, Val loves Conan, Val knows Conan, this is great, what movie are you going to? Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, us two, we sat together, we saw one, one of my favorite movies of all time, mm -hmm. which I hadn't seen at that point, and I watched it with Conan, don't let me forget the dream punchline. Right. So we sat in an empty theater, it was just us. And uh, he he was with um, I think his name is Matt who does the yeah Matt Clueless Corley. game yeah yeah so Matt is there as well. A couple of things that were notable about this viewing with Conan. Uh, one Conan had seen it before, and when Brad Pitt beats up the hippie for breaking his tire for mm -hmm. popping his tire, right. Conan leaned forward and rubbed his hands <laughs> like a fat guy okay. in a cartoon yeah, about right. to eat a, a full turkey. Sure, he went like this, like oh baby, <laughs> like I think Conan. I don't mind saying this. I think he hates hippies. He, yeah, sure. he doesn't oh, he like does. hippies. Yes. And he couldn't wait to watch Brad Pitt punch a hippie. Yeah. And he was loving it. I also got Skittles. Conan had no snack. And when Brad Pitt took his shirt off, I leaned over and said, I regret the Skittles, uh, <laughs> which, which got a laugh. Right. Third thing, which is the funniest thing I remember from this, was when Timothy Oliphant is on the screen. Conan, like a uh, geriatric, like, yeah. <laughs> like an elderly man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love him so much. I'm just teasing sure. him. Took out his camera, his phone, right. and took a picture of the screen, flash on. Right. And I was just like, 
the emperor's got no clothes, man. You're not hanging out with anybody that's going to be like, what the fuck are you doing? Right. What are you doing? Uh, flash on he, arc light. And he, he loves, texts it to Timothy yeah. Olyphant during the movie. And I wanted to be like, I didn't. This could be, this could have been real. This could what do you mean? This, this wasn't a dream. Oh, this happened? I haven't gotten I to the dream I thought the dream, dream punch. I thought you're telling me your dream. No, no, no. I, I no. This oh, is really listen happening. Listen to the tape. Play back the okay, tape. Okay, I believe you now. Because they're buddies. Okay. Play back the tape. Right. I didn't say this was the dream. I thought the dream punch. I'm, I'm listening to this thing. It's I very have specific. failed you as a communicator. It's very specific. I dreamt about Conan last All right. night. All right. And you need to know that this happened okay, to understand so now the I'm, dream. Okay, so now I'm on board. This okay. all, all happened. I blew it. All right. No, you didn't blow it. As I got a, it. As a weaver of tales. I'm still here. I'm okay. still here. Yeah, that's true. You yeah. haven't walked out. Yeah, I got Which it. has happened to me. Okay. This makes Sometimes sense. Sometimes the host leaves. This all makes sense. Any hoozle. He does text it to Timothy. Also reads the text, the reply during the movie. He just says, I'm, look what I'm watching right, right. now. I was like, this is some this right. is some next level stuff. Uh, meaning I, I don't relate. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, it was wonderful. And, and jokes aside, it was so meaningful to casually watch a movie with Conan. Right. Even if it was an, a mistake. And I love show business and I love that so much that last night my dream was just that it happened again. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Okay. So it was your dream, but it was also real life. That's Well, fantastic. then the dream was just I was in a movie with Conan and I was like, oh, my God, I'm in a movie. In the same way that I have a recurring dream that I'm doing the good nights at SNL. Right. Like I just, ever since I was a kid, and, and, and I'm, I'm happy to say that, I do want to say this unprovoked, Jay, is that so many people want to be in show business but I think they conflate that with being rich and successful and important, right? Which isn't guaranteed. Right. We all know that. Right. That's not that's not guaranteed. In fact, that's very unlikely. But the people that really belong in show business, I would say, it's it's seeping into your unconscious. You can't you can't escape it. Like if I tried to right. just become a carpenter somewhere, all respect to carpenter, I'm just saying a different profession. Right. It would it would chase me like the hound of heaven. Like I, I'd become the guy. Oh, you should have him build your birdhouse. He'll do a whole routine about right. it. You know what I mean? Or he'll put Snoopy in it. Like it'll be funny. It has to be funny. I need to do it. Could you be a carpenter and make, uh, you know, erotic cakes? No, be be carpenter making erotic cakes, but also do show business part time. Like, would you would you support yourself? Yes. And then doing one thing and try to do the other thing that you say is in your blood. Yeah. And would you be able to give carpentry your all while you're doing it? I love that question. I, I, I actually think the word balance is important to me. And one of the greatest uh, achievements of my life, honestly, is that my daughter and my friends in the town where we live, um, if you asked my friends, for example, what it's like knowing a comedian, I, I think they would say, well, this is crazy that I'm conjecturing. Right. People ask what Val, what is, what is, I know this answer. Right. What's it like being married to a comedian? And she says, I barely notice. Like, it's not that we're not funny or right. laughing. Mm -hmm. I've just worked so hard at sanding down the edges of this strange business to answer your question yes. that I have other deep passions and, and interests. And when I was in my twenties, we used to say, I, we, I wouldn't go camping unless it was to write a bit about camping. And that's essential. That's your hungry right. years, your coyote years. <laughs> you're thin, right. you're hungry. Right. I've never had those years, but yeah. fair enough. You're going about right. looking for somebody's sure. campfire mm -hmm. and it's desperate and it's fine. Um, but a lot of people extend their coyote years because they don't know that there's an, another way. It hasn't been modeled for right. them. I'm very lucky that I've had it modeled for me with comedians and other types of professions where they're like, yeah, that's what I do, but it's not all I do. And, I, and I'm very happy about that. That's great. I'm I mean, yeah. it's, it's interesting when you said people get into show business because they want to be rich or famous or other things. I think, important. yes, important, yeah. <laughs> but they, they place their value as a human yeah. based on the idea that if I am yeah. successful in show business, then I am a valuable human being. That's that, right. that's, that will uh, make me validate who I am and everything I am. And of course, once they become in show business, and even if they're popular, they're not validated and there's still that big empty hole. Yeah. That's what uh, Maya Angelou told Dave Chappelle. There's this great show called Iconoclasts. Yeah. yeah. And it was a great series and they interview each other. And uh, Maya Angelou said to Dave Chappelle, she said, um, don't pick it up, don't lay it down. Meaning if someone, so I'm promoting my special, I have a Netflix special coming up. Someone hates it 
you, you just have to leave it alone. You have to, okay, it's hard to do. My strategy is don't look for that. Don't seek it out. Um, but you also can't really t- pick it up when someone loves it. Like you have to kind of try to cut those ties to giving other people the authority to, to you know, govern your own self-worth. So that's interesting. I, I'm totally on board with cutting out the negativity. Yeah. But when somebody gives you the affirmation, how do you how yeah. do you keep it at a distance? You're not going to take off everything, well, are I, you? No, no, no. Um, okay. I just <laughs> no, no, no. Just keep I, some item of clothing. On. Well, you got me in the sun, I know, like well, a napping. I know it's kind of a torture thing. The more the oh, sun, it's like, this the is sun like beats down, it's the hot box. Yeah, it's going to beat down on you until you finally submit and tell me the truth. I'm with you that I I do need, uh, and I think we all need some affirmation and and some constructive criticism. But Mike Birbiglia, uh I'm trying to think. He said I had a joke about Michael Jackson. He was like. That's the best Michael Jackson joke I've ever heard. And then he goes, I don't like the way you get into it. And I I think that's gold. Mm-hmm. If someone who's been doing stand up 20 right. years, but you know, you know the punchline here. I don't want to go on Twitter and let some guy right. who like won one million oh, yeah. of his life. No way. And then he gets to tell me I suck. So you avoid that. But yeah, let's not be false. Affirmation, I need it. My wife. But my, was, I, can I tell you something he, about my wife? I was in a green room and I was doing my Trump impression. Didn't we I, did agree that you wouldn't talk about your wife when you got here? Yeah, but... Didn't? All right, just one thing. <laughs> Let's tell you the one thing that about your wife. We were with or one of my fa- fa- favorite impressionists in yeah. the green room yeah. and I was doing my Trump impression. They were doing their Trump impression. And Valerie loves me so perfectly. And even in the ways that are embarrassing to admit, but we're driving home. This is at the, at the comedy store. We're driving home and she goes... Uh, out of nowhere she just goes i actually thought your trump impression was better and i i know she means it she right. wouldn't have brought it up of course and i was like god you just know how how to love me so what it is is one of the reasons i don't have to seek it out right you're is getting because it. i get it at home right also when your wife who's so sick of your comedy like she knows all your jokes she backwards knows and forward she knows what's coming before you say it but can i okay no but, but then when she gives you the yeah. compliment it means so much but okay you know, because no, here's the no okay. I'm saying. Another thing, this has been already so nice because I've gotten to fluff my own feathers here. The greatest, so I told you, I've, I, I sand down the edges of being sure. a comedian. So much so that when Val comes and sees me do stand up, which she did last night or two nights ago, she goes, When do you write this stuff? And I go, <laughs> That is honestly to me going, that's keeping some of the mystery right. in, the, in the relationship. And it's part of seducing her. Yeah. I don't run bits by her. I write them down. She doesn't know what I'm writing down. She right. thinks I'm texting. And when I, that's the greatest joy is she's like, you did like 20 minutes of new stuff. And it's just yeah. like, that's right, baby. You don't know me. I'm Antonio Banderas. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm so not mysterious. I'm, I'm When I say I'm not sexy, I, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm not like Jude Law yeah. and I'm not, no, you, you, Don Draper. You, you understand. You're a guy. You're a guy. I'm just you're a, just guy. a person. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I'm wearing PJ that's, pants. That's and, kind of your thing, though. I mean, that's that, that's your persona too. Your comedy persona is you're a guy. You're and, just, that, and that's real, right? And, but then the way that I can bring some intrigue right. into our relationship, which isn't a fear based decision, right? It just it's just what happens. It's uh, interesting. It's you, a nice way to seduce. You and your wife, wife have a completely different relationship than me and my wife. But she, <laughs> well, I think that would be normal. Yeah, that's, that's why I was like, oh, I can't wait to yeah. tell you that I'm an yeah. outlier. She doesn't. Not very uninterested in what I have to say or what yeah, I but do. All and, she needs and, is and, to be visited by three ghosts. Yeah, <laughs> and she could flown be. to another husband. Sure, and, I, and, and she'll I tell come her, back. And I tell she'll... her that she's very lucky. I remind her every now. We've been married for twenty six years. She's very lucky. She's That's very it. lucky. I'm very lucky. I mean, Val. Val knows my silliness. Yeah, like I can do something that would jo- drop the jaw of any other person. I, I, forget, I think I was not wearing a shirt and I was like clapping by chicken <laughs> sure, winging. Sure. And singing a stupid song about how Brett Goldstein isn't as sexy as I am. <laughs> and I was yanking my right. underwear up and had a f- male camel toe. And sure. Just going, fuck it. I was right. just feeling silly. And she didn't laugh. And she laughs at right. everything. And so, yeah, 
She she's sick of not sick of right. but familiar with she some knew, of it. It's not that she wasn't surprised. It was that she knew it was coming. Like this, this. She's like, yeah, you know, this is not that different from the silly dance right. you did two days ago. The greatest ago. hits. It's it's on the thing. But then old Holmes is going to dig in and he's going to keep. <laughs> they, what is it? Do I need to rhyme the did song? You, did you like, finally oh, extort a laugh from her? And she's not a withholding person, uh-huh. so I knew if she wasn't laughing, this must truly not be funny. <laughs> <laughs> like for real, this must be garbage. Right. Well, there. See now, you and I are on the same page yeah. because I am going to do my bit in front of my wife regardless of whether she thinks it's great yeah, yeah, yeah. until I ex- until either, you crack them until I crack them or until I just exhaust the bit until I feel like I've done it in which case the joke is that you gave up you yeah, know what I mean exactly. no matter what something yeah. in fact you didn't ask but the a stand up tip is you're there to entertain them and if it's going badly the show is now watch me do badly right and that's a real transformation yeah like I might flail and sweat and right. swear <laughs> and regret it. Right. But my job as an artist is to share that experience. For sure. As opposed to thinking that you have to manipulate them into laughing at your act. Sometimes the show is, I'm a small plane crashing into a mountain. <laughs> right. And that's your show. That's going to be fun. Yeah, Andy you know Kinder I mean? has turned that into his career. Precisely. So there you go. Yes, Precisely. it's very good. He's good. probably a person that taught me that. Oh, I mean, very good. Like just from watching him. Yeah. Like, and maybe we talked about it, I don't know, but like, that's something liberating because stand up, stand up at gunpoint is not funny. And like thinking, my ex father in law told me he's like, I don't know why he told me this. I don't know where he got it, but he goes, don't think of it. I had done stand up probably six times at this point. He goes, don't think of it as making them laugh. Think of it as inviting them to enjoy what you enjoy. And I was like, what are you, Richard Pryor? <laughs> that was like the best That's advice I had gotten wise, from a photographer in yeah. central Maine. Wow. And I was just in the kitchen and I was just like, what the, f-? it changed my life. Yeah, he's Thank right. Thank you, David. He's right. David, so awesome. Yeah. Yeah, he's not watching. No, he's but not. It's, uh, <laughs> no internet yeah. presence, these no, people. No, that's fantastic. That, what a great advice. Yeah, it was incredible. Because being on stage isn't, is it, it's not that kind of, exactly that kind of transaction. It's a sharing. It's, it's a sharing. It's, it's a vibes. Sh- we're yeah, back to the- We're back to vibes. We, it's, it's sharing Do yourself. you like this vibe? And if they don't, I mean, there's a, I think there's a lot of like shadow work and spiritual work built into the humiliation of having your stand up fail or not be received in the way that you want. And I think it's really important uh, to be humbled in that way. But you also have to like reaffirm yourself and go, I invited them to merge with my vibe. Mm-hmm. And just in the same way that you and I might not, we are vibing, but maybe we wouldn't. Does that mean either of us are wrong or bad? No. So, so you think, think we're so. vibing? Not really. Yeah. It's, ooh, ouch. Yeah, because somebody really... Not the, here's your internet. <laughs> I'm not vibing with you on Don't Be Alone with Jake Hogan. That, that's my clip. Oh, yeah, you're supposed to say that. I forgot. We'll, do, we'll say that later. I won't um, say it again. Oh, uh, really? You okay. can splice that. All right, fair enough. Into the end. <laughs> um, I invite people on to this show to help me with the problem I'm having. Yeah. And so I'm going to give you the topic because it's a very selfish podcasting is a selfish thing in general. I mean, yeah. I mean, you do it with your wife, but I mean, it's- no, I know. I, but the Wednesday episodes are just me. So okay. you know, I was going to say you're just naming what every podcast person is. Doing. Yeah. So this is selfish. So this is you're helping me with the problem. The problem I have or I was thinking about uh, when, you know, and, and, I, and I do shape them for the guest who's coming Yeah, is uh, I think that you are an artist on a high plane and you and it, yeah and you try to remain on a high plane even though you know you you, you talk about dirty stuff and silly stuff yeah, and, yeah. and you rhyme things and all the but and and but you're you're giving people some bit of not just joy but enlightenment about the human condition i appreciate it thank and, you very much and 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 it's you know it's 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 fascinating you don't want to hear this from a super fan, but um, that you present yourself as this very nice guy, and yeah. then you talk about really horrible filthy yeah, yeah. things no, that's all right. the time. That's and right. so, like, you're giving per- all of us permission. Oh, you've got it to be who we really are. That's it. And but yet, be live and live and walk through the world with kindness. Thank you, Jay. Uh, I've never felt so seen. What right. a beautiful gift you just gave me. Well, because that's exactly what I'm going for. Well, it's working. What do you do? You're on stage. You're higher than them. You're louder than them. You're brighter than them. They're in the dark. You have a microphone. It might as well be a lion on a boulder roaring to all the cubs, right? Right. Or, you know, the other lions. 
what do you do with that position? And frankly, I think a lot of standups go up and, and give the audience what they had when they came in, which is, isn't sex great? Right. Isn't eating great? Isn't sleeping great? Isn't, this is more toxic. Isn't winning great? Yeah. Isn't being correct great? Aren't you always correct? You know, aren't we correct? And uh, I think that's a, I don't think that's what comedy, in my attempt at it, right. I think it's way more interesting to go, um, here's what I did that I w I'm not the most proud of. Here's what I did that's a little bit strange or dirty. Like right. you said, like, yeah. let's talk about sex or, or poop or right. or shame or whatever it might I, be, because that's that in itself is a joke. Right. I mean, we all got dressed up and you're sharing right. this like what that. If, there's a, a, what a, what a, a great joke. You have many great jokes, but one of the great jokes is about porn is, aren't you thrilled when there's something creepy porn that you don't that like? That you don't like, yeah. And it's like, yes, that thank you. That could have gone the that, other way. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. That would have been- That is a, fantastic. That I appreciate it. Yeah, uh, that would have been inconvenient. Yeah, no, that was that's, that's beautiful. But so my problem that I'm asking you to, to uh, chime in on, I'm, I'm a writer. Yep. I'm a performer sometimes, I do things, and I've made a living, a nice living doing all this stuff. The, the quest to keep your art on a higher plane yeah. and not just, oh, there's an opportunity. Yeah, Maybe it's not the thing that's hitting you in the exact right spot, but it's an opportunity. And then you take it and then you figure out, well, I'll, I'll worry about later how it's going to be enlightening yeah. or bring, like, how do you make sure that you keep your your soul as an artist on that higher plane? Well, boy, you just helped me realize the great privilege that I have in my life, which is that, you know, you, I write my own standup and that is always going to be the great appeal. So I always say standup is your wife and everything else is your mistress mm -hmm. and you have to stay faithful. To you. <laughs> right. She got you there. Mm -hmm. And you can, and she's even cool. It's an open marriage. You okay. can have these other right. things, and that's fine. But answering from that level isn't really helpful. Meaning, my mistress, by the way, is also my mistress. So when I do that, <laughs> combine that, and it's, it's not okay with my wife at all. <laughs> she's not. No, chill. she's not she's okay not with chill it. about not it. Not at all. Um, and the guma <laughs> doesn't know about the mistress, and that's lying. weird. But it, now it's cultural, so we yeah, have to respect exactly. it. Right. And that's all. You it's have not to my say culture. There. I'm Jewish, so but it's fine. Uh, Jews with better food, Ray yes. Romano called the Italians. They are better. They're better in a lot of things. Mm. I disagree. Okay. I just, I just right. do that to right, win, win you over. All I right. disagree. <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> <laughs> he hates Italians and likes Jews. Wait. Suddenly. Right. Um, okay. So how do you stay higher? How do you, how do you remain true to your art? And if the, and for me, yeah, there's a, it's just a, a matter of enlightening the human condition. It doesn't have to be more yeah. than that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I hear you. I'm going to answer from two altitudes. Okay. One, the altitude that I'm at right now, which is which is a privileged altitude. Not a lot of. It's very special to be in a place where you can write your own stand up and right. and have people enjoy it. So, the first thing that I think is interesting is if you you know garbage in, garbage out sort of thing. If you're working on your life, you're in therapy, let's say, or in my case, uh, I'm no longer in therapy. There goes that the whole thing that you have to be in forever. Mm -hmm. Me and my therapist were like. Okay, I think right. we got that's the thought system. We can move on, and I love him. Anyway, uh, I read so much spiritual stuff, and I know we're just talking about in, uh, better living. No, I'm but talking that, about spirituality because that's part oh, okay. of art. That yeah, is yeah. part of art. That stuff goes in. You're reading the Tao Te Ching or mm -hmm. something. It goes in, and I don't try to put it into my stand-up, but try not to, in the same way that if you're... It's like freestyle rapping. If all you listen to is NWA, something about not liking the police might come out in your freestyle. You know <laughs> right, what I mean? Yeah. Like it's just, so if you put all that goodness in, even if it's nine levels down in a porn bit, uh, it's in there and you don't have to effort it. It'll just happen. Um, then the next thing though, is right now I'm working on my new hour and I'm very proud of my new hour, but, and I'm not all, yeah, no, I am sort of this way. I can look at my hour and it has a color and a shape. Remember I said sanding down the right. edges. Of, so my comedy career has a color and a shape. It's just how I think. I think okay. it's how a lot of us think. If, if we really look at how right. we think, we're thinking that way. Okay. And right now my my hour is kind of, it's kind of brownish red, orange, and it's a little boxy and it's a little, there's some jagged parts and there's a little, there's some crevasses you can get <laughs> lost in. 
but I'm doing what I want to do. I'm talking about what I want to talk about and all this stuff. But then the next level is that's fine, but how do I add enough sugar to it to make it a pleasurable experience? Meaning I'm very proud of my hour the way it now is now, this new hour, not the one that's coming out. No, but that new one's coming out. It's horrible. The new one is so yeah, embarrassing. Don't watch it. No. <laughs> don't watch it. No, you got to watch that. That's going to be great. Don't watch it. Um, but when I come back to my hotel room, there's a feeling that I have. So I did my hour, let's say two times on a Saturday. I go back to my hotel room and there's just a, a gut feeling. I sent myself an email at like four in the morning and I was like, you need to write some lighter stuff. And sometimes I get it from watching other comedians. I watched Orny Adams recently at the Improv and he was just doing just like everybody would think that's funny stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing all this stuff about death and this and that. And I'm like, that's fine. Keep that. Right. But maybe prune the tree a little bit and mm -hmm. add some of the sugar. Right. So that's another way. If you want the, uh, the philosophy to survive, you have to pad it and pack it appropriately right. so it doesn't break in shipment. So that's that's the answer from this altitude. Okay. The altitude of like uh, someone who doesn't have the privilege of making their own stuff and performing their own stuff, which I think is kind of where we, it's what I was hearing in your question the first time, is like, yeah, that, that stuff, it's like a hierarchy of needs. When you're starting, not even starting, if you're not your own thing, a stand-up yeah. comedian, I, w I would take jobs. I wasn't, one of your guests was on my, on the show I wrote for Outsource. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting any philosophy or it's not but, my, it's not my show. Right. But you are, I mean, you but are. I am if, if what I said goes, but what I said wasn't what would go. It right, was someone else's thing. The stuff thing. that you're getting in is the stuff that you're getting in. And yeah, like you don't want to pitch the hackiest joke in the world. You want to pitch a good joke and you want well, to pitch- now, That's what I mean, the hierarchy yeah. of needs. So when I was a writer, I was like, can I at least do excellent comedy? Can I right. pitch excellent jokes? And that that was the bar, but it wasn't necessarily like, now if I write a show and it's my show, I will of course try to imbue it with as much underlying, pleasant, unconscious, you know, sub-frequency right. philosophy as I can. But I'm trying to I'm trying to relate to the people listening that don't have, most people th that don't have that privilege and saying like, of course sometimes you take a job and you right. just try to do it with excellence. Right. But I mean, most a lot of jobs in show business that aren't stand up comedy are communal jobs. They're jobs you're either being hired as an actor or hired as a writer or hired as an art director or hired and you're working within a framework and then you try to uh, try to raise the level of whatever your yeah. little thing is yeah. to as best as it can be. And that's what that's the pride that you're feeling yeah. in that thing. And I think that's important. It, it, it conjured up the image of a, like you're a crew member on a ship and you, and it might be a small change, but you might be the voice in the room that right. says like, maybe this instead of that. And that can change. So, you know, it's funny. I always think of it. Beth Stelling pitched a joke on crashing it was um, George, the guy who played Leaf, was playing with my face and he he made me smile and he goes, there you are, Peter, which is from Hook. And Beth pitched that joke. And people mention that to me all the time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Beth was a crew member on a ship, right. but she changed. Sure. That, that became a sticking point for a lot of people and a moment for a lot of people. And I had nothing to do with it. She had everything to do with it. So there are there is potential right. to not be the CEO right. of the company and still have a great idea. But you impact. had something to do with it and saying, yeah, great idea. Yeah. That's 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 part of it. And that I mean, when you're in that position, it's your job to sort of gather in all those great ideas and all yeah. the people and, and so and and not just from your writers, from your like I had a costumer on a show that I used to who used to Go through the script and say things that are not her department. Yeah. Say, I don't understand how this character can get from this place to this place with that. Sure. And it's like, you're right. I would fire and that person. No, I would. Yeah. I, yeah. I love her and embrace her no, name, Allison Freer. Fantastic. Allison, you're gone. No, she's fabulous. No, no, no. And, and it's like, and drive home. And when you drive home, stay in your lane. <laughs> and I stay celebrate in your her. Lane. And I would celebrate I any other celebrate crew her. member no. who wants to do that. I'm 100 percent kidding. Yeah. But as are. as I went on by the third season of, of Crashing, I the the one thing it took me three years to figure out, but I was getting better at listening. That doesn't this isn't me hinting at some scandal. I think in the first year I was just a lot meaning scandal like with the writers yeah. that I was like, shut the fuck right. up. No, it's just pressure. It wasn't like that. I just was like, 
we're only doing eight episodes. Of course. You can write eight episodes. Right. You know what I mean? So I did. Right. Meaning I would always do the draft. Right. And then we would change it. And then I'd change that. But by the end, and I'm not saying that as a cool thing, by the end, we started doing Judah Miller would do the draft or, mm. or, or Greg Fitzsimmons right. would do the draft. And we were better for it. Of course. And, and I wish I had learned that sooner. It, it worked out because we were doing eight. Right. But if we were doing 22, I would have figured it out after. It's hard, especially. That would have been one season. You have a season. It's your show. It's your thing. And you well, want, how are you going to write my dad? Yeah. You know what I mean? That, that was why. You need to have a certain amount of control there. And it's not until you set a template, yeah. people kind of don't know what to write anyway. And that's fair. Somebody, I think it was, yeah, no, it, was it Judd? It might have been Judd. It might have been John Stewart. Didn't tell me, but somebody who I knew who knew him. But they lightened it up on the writers. I always thought the writer's job was to write the show. And it is kind of. And it can be. On certain shows, it can be. Right. I knew someone who wrote on Game of Thrones, and they were like, no, that's my episode. Like, you can right. tell. Right. The way that it worked, Right. my word on right. that episode. This incest with this dragon is all that me. That was all me. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right. The squirting. Yeah. <laughs> and the flames at the right. same time. That that's, was all yeah. me. Exactly. So I know there are exceptions to this. But in a lot of comedy and a lot of shows that are kind of more run and gun, meaning like on Crashing, we would deliberately, this was all Judd, not finish the season before we started shooting. We wanted to have some pressure and some fluid, some fluidity. Right. So uh, we wouldn't, every season we were like, why don't we just write the whole thing? Just polish it. And he was like, he, he was onto something that you got to keep it alive right. and keep it kind of a game and have some stakes and put a clock on it, as we would say. But um. Yeah. I sort of lost my train of thought. The, oh, um, writing your own draft. Writing your own, but no, but oh, I was saying, the John Stewart thing. Yeah. It was uh, the writer's job is to write something that makes you think of what you wanted to write. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not always true. And that sounds like you're putting down the writers. Mm -hmm. It's actually saying like all the pitches are good, even the ones you don't take, because you're like one brain. And those are now thoughts in the brain and you end up coming, let's say the, the head writer or the, or the show creator does come up ultimately with what it is, but would they have come up with it if the writer hadn't pitched that thing that in, if you were inexperienced, you might've been like, get this person out of here. It's all, you don't do that in your own thought, in right. your own no, brain you, when you're writing, you don't go like, what an idiot. No. You, you hear it all and, and, and it all kind I of do. adds to I it. I say what an idiot when I think certain Sometimes. things. Sometimes. Yeah, it's bad. Sometimes. But, no, but that's exactly right. And, and good writers actually try to sort of uh, uh, translate their humor to the humor of the showrunner yeah. to say, okay, that's what this person wants. And I'll try to put something in that that person will like. Right. And because, you know, it's not my show, it's their show. Right. So they're trying to hit that sweet spot in the brain anyway. Yeah. They were so. very good on that on the on the Pete Holmes show because the monologues on the Pete Holmes show, a talk show that I did, was were very positive. Mm -hmm. It was very like, this was so kind, but also very helpful, is that we had a board with note cards on it and it was just at qualities of me as a host. Okay. Certainly not every quality, but mm -hmm. all the qualities that we wanted to project into the show. They had things like optimism, curiosity, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it was really helpful to. I would look at the board <laughs> and, and just because I'm just, everything. That's me. Yeah. Would you be surprised at some of the qualities of that were listed on the board? If you're in a bad mood, that's what made the board helpful. What so was, the board was as much for me as for anybody. Was there any quality on the board that you disagreed with? Deeply horny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually pretty asexual. Yeah, and it's like, so deeply horny. I was like, okay, uh, how do we fake anti that? Anti-Semitic. I yeah. don't. How did that? Get on the board. It's like, believe me, Pete. That's your handwriting. <laughs> you wrote that. You did it. Um, but I remember the writers, Nate Fernald, Jamie Lee, Joe DeRosa, all, all, all these great writers, Oren Brimmer. And now I feel like I have to name everybody. You but don't. Just IMDB it. But they, they were all great. <laughs> right. And Nate Fernald used to write fake monologues for the show mm -hmm. if we went nine seasons. <laughs> and it made me laugh so hard. Because we did, we like a monologue that I'm very proud of on the Pete Holmes show was called Hit It Back. It means if someone's trying to be silly, hit the ball back. Mm -hmm. Don't judge what they said for quality and whether it's worthy of your laugh. Play. Right. Life is yeah. about play. We don't do that here. But I yeah, know. I, I, I actually would like you to watch that monologue. <laughs> okay. But it was, all, it was all stuff like that. And then he was like, if we go nine seasons, it's just going to be, give a hot guy some ice. <laughs> He's hot. You have ice. Give him the ice. And I... 
you know, he I, I wouldn't say he was teasing me. He was sort of teasing the show, but and me. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I loved it. I was like, you understand what we're going for. Yeah, we great. are kind of doing give a hot guy some ice. Yeah, that's good. That's nice. It's okay. It's okay. That's nice. And that's what made us unique. Yeah. I didn't see the that's other That's why it stayed on shows. for nine seasons. Nine seasons. Yeah, there you go. More like it was 80 episodes. 80 episodes. Which, not Did bad. You, not bad. Did you enjoy that experience? Mm-hmm. That's great. I love that experience. Did you do that again? Well, no one's asking, which is great. It's, it's sort I of one asked. of those. I literally just. No, asked. I mean no network. <laughs> Nobody with the possibility of making it. Yeah, but I'm asking. It. Yeah, I mean, my life is so different now. I feel more like a hobbit now than I used to be. Aragorn, son of Aragorn. Okay, Arathorn, sure. Yeah, and now I'm a lot more hobbity. Right. Yeah, and I love yeah. the hobbit lifestyle. Right. That's that's the wife and the kid. It is, and it's also it's also just watching Valerie. I know we said we wouldn't talk about her, but but she's. She's much more artful in her appreciation of life and friends and community and long, slow dinners. And th- that sounds like she's like a fucking good housekeeping. Like, you know, that's mm-hmm. her thing. No. That's not her thing. She's a that very didn't, normal that didn't person. didn't sound that way. It sounded like somebody who is actually trying to get the most out of life. And, and, and she does. Yeah. And, and I've watched that. I felt like Bigfoot being like, friend? Like, right. I didn't know what friends were. Right. Neil Brennan said this thing, like, first 10 years of my comedy career were like this it's like you don't have friends that's not entirely true but let's just speak in extremes yeah he's like you don't have friends you're in a bar fight and occasionally you're punching in the same direction as the lunatic next to you <laughs> and it gives the illusion right. that you're on the same team but really uh if shit goes sideways you're gonna start fighting that person you yeah. know what i mean it's very it can be a little rough is neil brennan okay <laughs> Based on that quote. Is he okay? Is he all right? I actually think he's just kind of giving the ego an honest look. I still haven't gotten Conan's response yet. I'm very upset. What if I text him and he texts me no, right really back? really be pissed off. No, I mean, come on. I mean, I, mean, I, I, I went on a limb here I and know. then nothing. He's right. going to. He's going to. Horrible. Uh, uh, I, I have, a, I have a, 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 yeah. a, a question. This is a, a, something called question time. Question time. There's, a, there's actually a, a thing. There's like a jingle for question time. Oh, okay. But good. I don't know. We're not going to hear it because they, they don't let me play it here. It doesn't pipe into but, the but It's like uh, that. Studio. It's question time. It's question time. My kid wrote it. My kid wrote it. Anyway. It's, How old's uh, your kid? 22. Oh, wow. He's fabulous. He's a really great musician. If my dad, I would love it if my dad goes, uh, Peter, he's fabulous. He's really, a, he's genius. My dad is effusive. I just mean like yeah. the word fabulous. Yeah, he's, he's a genius. Uh, oh yeah. I he's, believe it. He's smart and he's uh, he's a Stanford student. He's an international relations major, but he's also an incredibly, amazingly talented musician. Wow. Singer, songwriter. What does he play? Everything. Wow. Yeah, he plays everything. Good but he's you. also just super smart and his music's great. And uh, Charlie Kogan at uh, Spotify, listen to it and then write me and tell me I'm a liar. Tell me I'm a liar. Very sweet. I love. I love dad's love. Anyway, loving no, he's their great. Sons. He's great. Um, but uh, uh, so the question time. So this requires you. These are pre-written questions from a list of questions that I got that were interesting to me from the internet. From the internet. Like you asked the internet. I, I looked at looked up interesting questions on in the internet and I stole them. Oh, they're not catered to me. They're just interesting. It's a general, but you're gonna like the question you pick. No, I know. I just didn't know what a, we were doing. Pick, you pick a letter between A and G. And then a number between one and eighteen, and then we're going to change the world. It's so funny. I went right to H, which is after G. Okay. You can't do it. No. I'm going to say C four, baby, because this is going to be explosive. Okay. C four. Uh, this is a bad question. It's <laughs> a uh, bad question. We'll try. What's your communication style like, and how do you express your thoughts and feelings? I think that's a great question. Okay. Let's the see. other ones must be really good. The other ones, are- you know. It's funny, my communication style is uh, sonar pinging and um, there might be some narcissistic roots or self-centered roots or self-serving Everything roots in this. Has I that. know, I know. This is what I'm learning is, is let's not deny, let's right. go through. Mm-hmm. Let's look at our right. wounds and our shortcomings and work with them it's okay instead to of be, denying them. It's okay to be a human being That's right. who has needs and wants and lives like a human being. But it's a lot okay. of people's social strategy is to act like they don't. I just right. uh, had Rabbi Mordecai Finley on my podcast this morning and he was telling this amazing story about this person who was in rabbinical school and uh, they were saying, I don't have uh, murderous impulses. I don't have a shadow. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And then years later he called them and they, and they weren't in rabbinical school anymore and he said what happened 
And he was like, you do have those impulses. Right. And then she was like, uh, I found out you were right. There are murderous and hateful and ugly thoughts inside of me. So I don't feel worthy to be a rabbi. And he goes, you are now worthy to be a right. rabbi. That's exactly That's right. That's like a street joke. Yeah. That happened in life. That's a real thing. That's yeah. a real thing. So anyway. It's totally Jewish too, by the way. Oh, I've had, Yeah, I didn't know you were a Jewish or I would have put this on another day. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's just, <laughs> yeah, I, there's enough. Yeah. You can have I, a limit. I, there's a limit. I get it. No, get no, it. no. I, yeah. I couldn't, I yeah. can't get enough. I get it. But I did have a very Jewish morning and I mean that in the best way. I, I'm in an incredible mood. Look them up. Mordecai yeah. Finley, incredible. Any who's so Jewish and Irish. I know, right? Yeah, very strange. I didn't. Maybe uh, an imposter? I don't know. Could be. Could be. All right. <laughs> I would like the rabbi imposter. What does he think he's getting away with? <laughs> the <laughs> Irish guy that's like, yeah. what if I was Jewish? What if I Jewish? pretended to be Jewish for a second and then I got. It just stuck. What? Go to a lot of funerals? What, what do you get out of that? Nothing. 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 Yeah, nothing. Um, um, all right. Oh, wait. The that's style is yes. sonar pings. Okay. Meaning. And I've gotten better at this over the years, but it's sort of in favor of, I, I don't want to say interrupting, but it's how you and I are talking right now. It's not entirely linear and it's not entirely formal. So some people might listen to my podcast and go, would you just let the guest talk? Or would you let them finish that thought? Or you never got to the end of that story. And I always say, and this is my protector, this is my mm -hmm. big strong guy who keeps me safe inside. He goes, go listen to someone else's fucking podcast. Right. If you want to listen to a QA, and a mm -hmm. I'm going for something that's a little bit different. It's a little bit harder to find. Right. And what it is, it's a rhythm and it's a, it's a space, it's a spaciousness. And what the, if you think the point of a question is the answer, it's not the right podcast for you. Right. We're trying to go somewhere together. He, the guest exactly and I. Exactly right. And if you want facts, ask ChatGPT to tell right. you 35 th things about Rabbi Mordecai Finley, and, and it'll do it, and, and nine of them will be wrong. A liar, an <laughs> imposter, yeah, never I, went to rabbinical school. Yes. Yeah, and all this stuff. Um, con man. But I, no, the, but I, I think the value of, uh, of, of that style is something that's sorely lacking in most people's lives, which is feeling connective. Yes. And it's a very, it's, it, it's Partly a feeling why, yeah. why I like your stand up and I and I and I appreciate it and and it's what I'm going for. And yes. I, I may, I may, I may and not be good it. at it. You're doing but I'm it trying. right now. But I do want people to feel connected. But it's similar to my stand up. If you think the point is the joke, you've misunderstood. Yeah. The jokes are an excuse for us to create a, a, a color together. It's an excuse to hang out. Yeah. Everything is an excuse to hang out. And I'd go even further. Everything's an excuse to love. Different people love different ways though. Yeah. My way of loving, when I say pings, is I'm going, I'm afraid of this. Are you afraid of this? So, and sometimes, it's actually interesting, the Rabbi Finley episode, the first 10 minutes, you can really see I'm going, where are you? Mm -hmm. Like he's He's got a razor sharp mind. He wasn't letting anything slide. Uh, and and then like if you cut to 45 minutes later we're both reclining and laughing because <laughs> we found the right ping right. but if i had just sat there and lobbed questions at him would we get more information yeah but i'm not in the information business i'm trying to get like a a, a like a wedding should look like the love of the couple. I don't f give a fuck about your vows or the tradition it's under or the seating or, or all of that stuff is in service of a 3D manifestation of what the couple's heart, their shared heart looks like. It's not about that funny line or that, fuck that shit. Right. The great sermons or talks or anything, and I'm talking about non-academic stuff, like mm -hmm. if you, if you're an engineer, you yeah. go for the facts and I right. want you to go for the facts. <laughs> but like, if you're going to a, a sermon, it's like, I went to my master not to learn from him, but to watch him tie his shoes, that that old thing. Right. It's like the vibe and the, and the, and the, like I can quote Rupert Spira, who's a great teacher of mine, and I do. But when you see someone who embodies what they're teaching, that's the actual transmission. It's not really what they're saying. It's the space between the words. So is your, do you feel, getting back to the question, your communication style is, as you say, pinging, but then do you want to embody yeah. love or embody yeah. connection? What do you, what? It's, if you on connect a, with that On person. a good day, yeah. my style is trying to be spacious, mm. trying to green light them, 
uh, which, you know, isn't really what a lot of people are doing. <laughs> right. It's like, even if you say people, somebody once joked that me firmly disagreeing somewhat with somebody on my podcast, they did an impression of me. They go, interesting. That's, that's what I say. And I really disagree right. with what they say, but that's spaciousness. Right. And that's a quality that most people are looking for is, is, is a space. And then as you mirror that to them, they start getting more spacious to you. How much space do you give them if you truly disagree? Yeah. How much space do you give them before you sort of pipe up and go like, well, maybe this other thing is, is I've also gotten true. better at that. Yeah. I've gotten better at being yeah. okay with a little conflict or whatever. Yeah. But and and these days, I mean, there are things that you there's even more of a need to be like, whoa, yeah. like I don't know about that. But um it's a fun experiment. So I try to be patient. I try to be understanding. Something that I really try to live by is if I were you, I'd be you. So if I was Jake Hogan, I'd be Jake Hogan. Mm -hmm. You know how we know that's true? You're Jake Hogan. Yeah. And if I was Trump, I'd be Trump. I know that's true. I want to be a better Jake Hogan. And, and, I, that's and great. I actually want to be a better Trump too. Like I'd like like I think he should be better. Like there should be it's okay to be Jake Hogan, but yeah. wouldn't it be great to be Jake Hogan? Yeah, you know? That's fine. That's yeah. all part of Jake yeah. Hogan. Yeah. But what I'm saying is the if you pick someone you really disagree with saying if I were them, I'd be them. The best examples for me are my parents. I go like, I wish my mom was like this or my, my dad might right. say this. Okay, if I were him, I'd be him. If I grew up in Winter Hill and had this background and had this father right. and this mother and this, uh, my DNA and my genes and all that stuff, I would be him. So it sort of depersonalizes it. Well, and it's a road to forgiveness. That's yeah. what that is. It's a road to mercy actually, because yeah. forgiveness, I, and not to split hairs, but forgiveness is the it, it can be in our parlance, can be like uh, Jay is an asshole, but I understand because I've rationalized why he might have been an asshole. Maybe he's, mm. he didn't have lunch that day, right. or he f just got some bad medical news. Okay, that's kind of forgiveness. Mercy is like to quote Richard Rohr, my homeboy, everything belongs, meaning even that like short sightedness in this regard. Right. It, it it's not my place to say that needs to be eradicated. I'm talking about a, yeah, a behavior. But I guess when, when we're talking about mom and dad, that's specifically, what I was saying, yeah. specifically, like I had to get to that place with my parents where to say like, I wish, you know, I'm 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 mad at my parents because they didn't do X, Y, and Z and what and then eventually I got to a place, well, consider how my father was raised and yeah. consider how my mother was raised and yeah, all they're their, astronauts and they needed <laughs> they need to be who they are yeah. and they did the best they could with what they had yeah and me me wanting them to be different is pointless yeah and me holding on to that is also pointless that's and actually so a debate i've had many times is is rain wilson did my podcast and i said your parents did the best they could and he goes did they and he, he it was very funny right and couldn't they have gone wait a minute and tried Will is a very interesting thing. And and we're not really as in charge of our will, meaning the will to quit smoking, the will to start exercising. Yeah. I think will is one of the most interesting Well, I've things. a model of self-discipline. I mean, there's nothing I there's nothing I But why there's no part of my life that isn't hammered and exactly <laughs> everything I eat, all the exercise I do, it's fabulous. But when you do make a positive change. Yes. You might, let's say you get up and you decide, I'm going to walk for an hour every mm -hmm. day, some, something like right. that. I like how you rolled your eyes, picturing me walking. He's not going to walk. I, That's not know, happening. You were so sweaty. In <laughs> no, but let's say you did do that. Okay. You might say you watched a YouTube video about the benefits of walking an right. hour every day. And I would say, fuck you. That's bullshit. The you that even clicked on the link, why walking an hour every day, it was already happening. Mm -hmm. And why did it start to happen? Fred Rogers, love or a lack of it, love or a lack of it. Right. So when, like I recently, uh, I've lost some weight. Why? Well, I, I couldn't begin to tell you exactly why, but it has a lot to do with my wife loving me. Mm -hmm. It has a lot to do with me loving me. Right. And we could unpack either of those. But like, you know, Stephen Pressfield in The War of Art, he says like creating what you're supposed to create in the world, whether it's you know, comedy or a table, doing what you're supposed to do starts creating this flow that that can lead to healthy choices and stuff. But like, it's it's arrogant to go like, you know, it's short-sighted to go, 
Well, I just realized I was going to die. People who are smoking know smoking is unhealthy. People who quit smoking don't quit smoking because smoke, smoking is unhealthy necessarily. This is my hypothesis. Why do they quit then? Love or a lack of it. Something happens. Okay. Something happens in their life. Right. The rats in the cages that they gave heroin to, the ones that were in rat paradise where there was exercise balls, community, food, space, and the rats that were climbing over each other and miserable, the miserable ones were, I'm not saying that's the solution. I'm just saying one study. Right. The ones in Rat Utopia stopped using heroin. A very small amount of them continued to do it. Right. So there's links. But they all still listen to fish. They love fish. They love fish. What is about it? That jam band, Rats Love. I love a good yeah. down-tuned 12-string <laughs> guitar. Me too. Um, I, this sounds like I have it all figured out. I'm just no. saying like we need to recognize that the ripple effect of saying, I don't want to be in a relationship where I'm scared and walking on eggshells. I don't want to be in a job where I'm disrespected and broken. And even if I have to like learn a new skill to get another job or, or take a chance or, or whatever it is, let's stick with the relationship right. one. But that's let's get easier. back to show business because you, if you're in show business, you're going to have to take a job that's unpleasant at some point to get to where you're well, going. Well, now we're talking about something else. Yeah. yeah. Fortitude. Yeah. If you're, well, that's something we said in Crashing that I'm the most proud of is is uh, if it sucks, that's how, that's how you know you're doing it right. right. We're changing gears, but I think that's great. Right. There's that great Bill Burr talk where he talks about he was starting out in stand-up. He had nothing going. He was just doing fucking little, little shows, local shows around New York. And he did a show at like one in the morning and they gave him $12. He tried a new bit. It worked for the eight people that were there. And he goes home and I don't know who he's, I'm gonna kind of rabbinical style, sure. say his, his his girlfriend at the time was a paralegal, let's okay. just say. And, and Bill was in the kitchen and he was doing a dance because he was so happy right. that he did a new bit. And she, and she said to him, I wish I had a job that paid me $12 and I came home and did a, a dance in my kitchen. Right. Similarly, when I was starting doing standup, the coked up, club managers, the brutal other comedians, the horrible crowds, the endless parade of embarrassments and humiliations and bombing. But I would, this is real, and I get emotional thinking about it. I'd ride the F train home. And if I had done a bit, a new bit or old bits, it didn't matter, for four people at two in the morning at a bad club, when I walked home, I used to picture myself like, a thousand feet tall dancing in the skyline, in the New York City skyline. Because that's how I felt. That's great. I felt like the big friendly giant that's dancing. Great. And I had made zero dollars. I had a lot, look, right. and that's a privilege. I had support from my parents. I, at the time my wife was working a regular job, all that sort of stuff. So I had support, not everyone can do that. But I, I knew I was in the right place, not because I was like one day, Jay Kogan will write me a very kind email and ask me on his podcast mm -hmm. and tell me that I'm his hero. That's how I wasn't, I, I did a bit. Mm -hmm. I did a bit and right. it worked. Right. That fucking felt great. That does feel good. Yeah. That does feel good. I mean, because you're giving of yourself. You do, That's the goal. Like you give a little bit from here and from here. And if it works yeah. over there, then. That's... And if that corresponds to your wound, like your my wound is like, if I'm not seen, I don't exist and I'm not safe. That, that now, now we're on our recipe to compulsion. Right. And com good compulsion. Okay. Meaning every standup I know that's, doing it a long time and is good at it it's a compulsion <laughs> compulsion gets it's all ocd right it's not all ocd right uh you know fucking sammy sosa i tried to think of a baseball person is has a compulsion right. to swing a baseball bat that's why i'm one of the world's great masturbators because i can do it regularly and really well it is probably just, yeah. it is probably a compulsion people know people know people know that about me that's what's great about me uh, I have a, a viewer mail or listener mail I'm going to get to. There's a, a thing. We'll play the viewer mail thing. Now it's time for listener mail. Viewer and mail. Hey, That's copywritten. I, I'm going to blow your mind, yep. maybe. Fat guy in a little coat. <laughs> it's Bill Murray. All right. He's doing Bill Murray. Yeah. I'm not taking away from Farley. Yeah, no, I'm no. saying, isn't it fun that even the legends yes. that we admire, yeah. they admired other legends. Of course. It's no, I mean, I, it's a lesson I had to teach Charlie, uh, which was, 
you know, steal like an artist, which is that's right. You gotta, you know, it's okay to love something and embrace it, and then yeah. make it your own. You can't do that thing, but you make it your own. For the first five years, I yeah. was doing Brian Regan. Yeah, let's. I mean, come on. That's all, and a lot of people just keep doing Brian. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Brian's still doing it. Yeah, yeah. Brian and he's does very it, good. and they, there's like you know he's a uh, McDonald's. There's Burger Kings out there. Yeah, so you just you steal like it. you take great things yeah. and you put it out there. So hey, here's people here's, love Burger King. Here's a, uh, a letter. It's a little serious. This is from Grumpy Cat, who's also known as Karen. Um, uh, she uh, wrote, "Why does it seem like we are always in a state of trying to fill the void? Is this as unhealthy as it sounds?" Or is it inevitable human condition that keeps us going? Maybe the best case keeps us motivated, but the worst manifestation leads to unhealthy addictions. Why am I always thinking of the next thing to buy? And then she goes on, this is a long one. Last year I was bedridden briefly, and it took months for my systemic nerve damage to heal. During that period, I swore as long as I could have my good health back, I would be grateful and appreciate being fully functional and forget every other thing. Now that I'm nearly healthy again, I'm back on the bullshit again. Yeah. And uh, is this just is this just life, or is this some secret to taming the void? Yeah, great question. I mean, I th I'll do my best, but like, there's a lot here. Yeah. One is there is uh, something zeal, right? Yearning. Yeah. That's good. It's it's good to have. I'm sure you know as a writer, it's like when you have that thing that you want to write, and yes. and you go to it and you create it. It's it's this cosmic you hang on to that because there's plenty of moments when you go like oh yeah i hate this yeah <laughs> yeah but a purpose yeah can be really great right. of course that purpose gets co-opted into a, a, an endless string of desires and and, and then nothing works it's, it's what the buddhists call the hungry ghost right big belly mm -hmm. so insatiable belly thin neck nothing gets down so that's a powerful image you're trying to eat Instagram, you're trying to eat that next Amazon package, none of it's getting in and you got a huge belly. So right. that's the perversion. Am I crying? A little Just bit. Just crying, okay. Just check. All right, keep going. But this is Ramdas. Yep. Uh, Ramdas talks about the great ice cream cone in the sky. Uh, he goes, it, it, it's like a stand-up bit. It's a great bit. It's in Be Here Now, but I recommend people listen to Experiments in Truth, which is a great place to start with Ramdas. It's on iTunes. Anyway. He says, like, look at the human condition. It's like you wake up, I, I need coffee. You have coffee, and now I need the bathroom. Right. And now I need breakfast. Now I need water. Now I need to get to work. Now I need to do some work. Now I need to rest. Now I need to relax. Now I'm bored. I'll watch TV. Be better at popcorn. I'll have popcorn. Now I need something sweet. I have something sweet. Now I'm tired. Now I go to bed. It never fucking stops. Right. I want ice cream. Now you want water. Fuck, this sucks. So, look. There's circumstantial happiness, which is kind of what we've been talking about, fulfillment, drive, right. purpose, meaning, love or lack of it, relationships, place, all that stuff. It's important. But I think deep down, Rupert Spira has a book called You Are the Happiness You Seek. I highly recommend it. A better place to start with Rupert would be YouTube, but also he has a book called Being Aware of Being Aware. And when you're looking for, so to me, the spiritual pursuit is the pursuit of the permanent. Everything is changing. Right. right now I'm in front of you. But right. In 10 minutes, something else will be in front of you. So we're get, we get curious about what is the constant aspect of your experience. Oh, okay. And it's your awareness, right? It's it's this thing in you that is aware of, of your experience. And I'm really but, summarizing it. Go but ahead. What, I mean, I'm, still, I'm fascinated by the idea of the pursuit of the permanence. Yeah. The permanence of a condition, the permanence of happiness, the permanence of... Of, of awareness? What, what, I'm not going to be able to explain this. You okay. should watch Rupert Spira, right. but I'll try. Yeah. But it's like that which is aware I of, told you how much I masturbate. I don't have yeah, time yeah, for yeah. all this stuff, but all right, keep going. That, that which is w what part of you is aware of any condition or any experience. Right. Rupert says that awareness is like a screen. And we don't, it's so obvious that we don't talk about it. But something is aware of what you're seeing what you're hearing, what you're thinking, right. what you're feeling, whether you're dreaming, hallucinating, bored, happy, depressed, there is a thing. So think of a, a memory from your childhood, okay. any memory. You're in a swimming pool with your buddies. Okay. Is there a sense of being in that in that memory? Yeah. And it's here sure. and it's here now too. Isn't yeah. It? Right. So that is the through line. Okay. That is the thing that will always be with you and has always been with you. 
and that is being, that is being aware or consciousness right. or awareness itself, right? Here's, this, this is a long way to say, right. when we start getting more familiar with identifying with the witnessing presence that regardless of Pete is depressed, Pete is happy, but you get, you stop identifying with Pete and you start uh, withdrawing your attention from the content of your experience into that which is experiencing, what we refer to when we say I, mm -hmm. I. Right. And when you get into that, here's the good news. When you get curious about the quality of awareness, it's not, and this is what meditation is, right. but the good news is, is I'm doing it right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I can rest in it. Yeah. And it's not neutral. This is the great news. This is what the gospel is, the good okay, news. Right. Uh, it's not neutral. It's actually, it's spacious. It's free. It's timeless. It observes time, but it itse itself isn't bound by it. And it's happy is, is kind of a stupid way to say peaceful yeah. or joyful. Right. So when we catch ourselves going like, when I get, I could do it right now. After this jam, I'm going to be in my car and I'm going to drive home. And when I see my daughter, I'm going to be so happy. Yeah. Fuck that shit, dude. The thing that will be observing and experiencing my daughter is here now and just rest in it and expand or dissolve into it. Right. And that is happiness. It's non-circumstantial happiness. So spirituality has been reduced and sort of ruined into what happens when you die, uh, which God do you swear allegiance to? What are your rituals and your rites? How do you get married? Uh, are you circumcised? Whatever it might be. All religion at its higher level is trying to introduce you to yourself, capital S, self. But it's not just a, as a thought experiment. It's because that's where the peace is. Right. That's where the happiness is. That's where, the, in fact, it's the only happiness. But staying in that zone, staying in that place. And that's the practice. Is difficult. Okay, yeah, I, I, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm thinking what my teachers would yeah. say to that. They would say, what could be more natural than being what you actually are? Right. And you've actually just been conditioned to, you were pinching this and you go, oh, I'm this. Right. And then you have decades and decades of, of going, I must be this. But really you're, the, you're this screen. You're the screen, you're not the movie. So the, the screen is not tainted or colored or changed or affected in any way by the contents of the movie. So stepping away from the movie and going, I'm the screen is peaceful. I'm totally down with it. Yeah. I'm just saying that the practice of it. No, no, I, I know you hear me. Difficult. And, and, and when I hit it, I really do try to yeah. divest myself of everything. But here we are in this now trying to be me. I meditate. Sometimes I do all that kind of stuff and I'm, better at it than a lot of people I know, yeah. but I'm still not, never, I'm and still the, floating back and forth in it. And me too. Yeah. The Okay, so this is in Be Here Now too. It's like, we can either take other people's word for it. You could say Buddha or Christ, Muhammad. You could you can have these avatars, right. these symbols and go, well, they did it. Right. And there's peace there. You can mm -hmm. go, they did it. Right. It's like kind of like being like, well, Batman bounced back. <laughs> right. I, I'm not saying they're like Batman. I'm just saying right. like, I actually meant all respect to Batman. <laughs> His parents died. Right. He, he, bounce back. So right. those become powerful symbols. I, I do think those are historic right. figures. Yeah. But Batman's not real. I mean, <laughs> one time I did stand up and I said, Spider-Man's not real to a kid dressed as Spider-Man. I was like, you're the real Spider-Man. And it, like Spider-Man's not real. And he went, what? <laughs> so you got to be careful. Yeah. But the good news is, and I can attest to a little bit of this, meaning the more you practice it, the easier it gets. Yeah. Because now more than ever, it makes more sense when you say what could be more natural than just being what you what you are. Right. And it starts by saying, what am I? I always thought when people go, the biggest question you can ask in life is who am I? And you go, well, I'm Pete, I'm Lithuanian and Irish, and I'm from Boston and I'm a comedian. All that stuff isn't essential to me. It's not essential. Right. Uh, I, I once tried to explain this to a, I think it was from the New York Times and, and he just didn't understand what I was saying. He was like, I'll always be, part of me is from Brooklyn. Like I'll always be from Brooklyn. And I'm like, well, what if we went into a, a wormhole <laughs> right, and your memory was wiped, right? Or, or let's that's okay. too cheap. Right. You live on a planet, your memory isn't wiped. You're still from Brooklyn, right. but I take you to another planet. Right. And on this planet, because of the conditions of the planet, you live forever. After 
how many years? Millennia. Yeah. Are you now from Zorn? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And and how long before the Brooklyn goes away? Right. Completely. And if it's a if it's a hundred million years, I'll accept it. Right. But at some point, we agree that your Brooklynness could fade away completely. Yeah. And of course, it fucking could. Right. Because I used to love garbage pail kids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. That used to be my identity. Right. Right. These things aren't essential. And it goes back to our, our thesis. We're looking for the constant. And the only thing that's constant is when you th sing the song Happy Birthday in your mind, something is hearing it. Something hears your thoughts. Right. Something you're aware of me. And the question is not who am I, because that, I don't think that's as clear as it can be. It's who or what is aware of my experience. I want to be enlightened enough to be happy that I'm going home to see my daughter. Yeah. And then finding out my daughter's not there because she's thing and still be happy. Still, even though that, yeah. that experience yeah. that I had planned on isn't there. Right. Because even even though you're saying the, the goal is in the moment, feel the feel the feel now. You can yeah. feel the feel now. Yeah. I'm still thinking about the experience I'm going to have. And if I miss that experience, to not feel the disappointment of that necessarily. Well, yeah. Okay. No, yes and no. I, I'm with you. A, a book that changed my life is by Byron Katie, and it's called Loving What Is. So I get home and my daughter isn't there. She's she's at a sleepover mm -hmm. and, and she didn't say goodbye. Right. And there's disappointment. So Pema Chodron says, your feelings are the weather, you're the sky. So real happiness when we can stop chasing the next hit of dopamine. Real peace is that sky awareness. You're the light, not the bulb, right? But let's say the disappointment comes in. I think Rupert Spira, I think Eckhart Tolle, I think Byron Katie, I think Jesus Christ, I think Buddha saw disappointment. They just didn't confuse themselves with it. You're, when there is disappointment, the same neutral, spacious, and I would say joyful, peaceful awareness is the one seeing it. Right. And sometimes we get so intermingled, we lose ourselves. But again, what could be no more natural than to just withdraw your attention from the disappointment, just, just for a brief moment right. and go, who is noticing the disappointment? I, and I is not, it's not even, it's outside of time. And, and you can do this. Here's one. I hope this doesn't freak you out. I did this to Craig Ferguson and it freaked him out. All right, that's and I love him dearly, but I felt bad for maybe freaking him out. But being afraid of yourself is is is, is nonsensical is what I wish I had told him mm -hmm. because it's safe. Your, right. Yourself is safe. You can trust yourself. And I mean the, the I. But when you, if you close your eyes, it's only take 30 seconds. All right. And, um, just try to feel your hands, right? Just feel where your hands are without moving them, okay. but sense into your hands. Mm -hmm. And you feel it, right? You feel kind of like, if it's like me, it's kind of like a pins and needly kind of, like rain mm -hmm. on a windshield. You just kind of, there's a sensation. But if you were a baby, this is all Rupert Spira. Mm -hmm. If you were a baby and you had never opened your eyes and you had never had an experience, and I asked you, where are you experiencing the, the sensation of hands? What you and I know as hands. Mm -hmm you would say here, it's here. It's in this field, it's in this space called I. We add distance. We right. go, it's over there in mm -hmm. my hands, but it's all experience right. here. So same thing. Now let's withdraw it from our hands and move it to our, uh, our feet. Okay. And now you feel your feet. It's probably, there's fewer nerve endings, so you're not gonna feel your feet as well. Yeah. But you can feel them. Sure. You narrativize that and add the story of it's all the way down there. Mm -hmm. But where in your awareness, where is the feeling of the feet? It's here. It's as, it's not just close to you. Mm -hmm. It is you. Right. It's appearing as you. Okay. And then we add the story. So in the same way, all of reality is like a flat piece of paper and we're just putting stuff on it. Then we add space. So that's kind of an experiment of going like, reality isn't observed by consciousness, which is right. one Reality is consciousness. Yeah, there's a there's a, a thing that I do in an improv class. Is Bill Steinkellner I took for many years. He does something called the golden thread, which mm. is the golden thread 
before a class, you're holding hands and you feel the golden thread going through your body, yeah. coming up from the earth and going through your body and he does each part of your body and to your brain, mm -hmm. uh, coming up through the everybody else in the circle and up in the sky and up into everything. And so before we begin doing improv, yeah. we feel that's great. together that's great. and feel everything. And, and, that's, yeah. and, and you feel it. And it's embodied. Yeah. That's why I, all Craig said was that gives me anxiety. I, 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 I'm yeah. joking when I said it freaked me out. Yeah. I find great peace in that. Yeah. The same is true for that guy. I'm looking at a guy on the sidewalk and I add the story, he's all the way over there, but he's, he's, it's so intimate. Right. And when I've had psychedelic experiences, that, that is the message is you go, you think you go to God or you go to heaven or you, there's somewhere to go. And really what is happening is the impediments to realizing that you, the kingdom of heaven is here and now right. those are removed and, and, when 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 we do whether it's when we die or whatever i don't know we'll go it'll be a big joke you'll go we were there the whole time and and a movie played and we can make the movie kind i think right. that matters we're we can, sitting next to conan o'brien in a movie theater <laughs> yeah that's right yeah and conan was watching the movie of right. our life rubbing his hands <laughs> right like but mr that, burns that is as close as i can get to to work on cultivating a feeling of unperturbable peace isn't as exotic as it sounds and uh, a paradox i will say is if i'm living my life in a meaningful way and that includes things like what i'm eating what i'm reading all these like oh that's just mm -hmm. the bullshit in the movie i right. think okay well the paradox is if i'm having nice conversations like this and if I'm taking care of my body, and if I'm finding people who are loving to me and not unkind to me, I I have more of a center within which I feel safe to explore the nature of of consciousness. And I do want to say one last time, everything that I just quoted was either Ram Dass or Rupert yeah, yeah. Spira. No, no, uh, it's but, not for copyright reasons. No, it's no. because they can explain it better. Than right, me. I get it, and 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 I didn't think we were stealing anything, but but it's good to find a source and people can read other things. But being it, aware of being aware, I, I, it, it's unbelievable. Giving and giving Grumpy Cat one last thought, which is there is it's okay to have a hunger. It's okay to be the person who like to acknowledge that she wants to buy something or do something or but if you can if you can move that that desire yeah. to the healthiest place it can be then yeah. it, you can turn it for good and turn it to your sure. own good and your own benefit i think because i don't i don't think it's realistic to never you know i i i think it i think you can get to a place where you don't desire things so much as desire people or moments yeah, but you still turn to wanting to desire something Betty, yeah, I'm glad you said that because I'm I'm also looking forward to playing Red Dead Redemption later. Yeah, and I was excited when my Xbox Redem showed up. Red Dead Redem Redemption Red Three, two, two. Okay, I'm replaying okay. two. All right, right. Because right. um, people don't like three. There is no three. Oh, I thought there was a three, and the people didn't like it. No. Okay. There's two, right. and people love it. Okay, great. <laughs> yeah, people love Red Dead. Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they like and it's, and I mean, I think there's metaphysical questions about Red Dead as well. But I do want to say like, I, I I mentioned that because I still get a kick. It's dopamine. Yeah. It's dopamine seeking behavior. Yeah. But even saying that is one step closer to the depersonalizing of what I'm saying. Meaning it's not you, it's your animal. And you can be gentle and loving to your animal. And by animal, I just mean your body, your right. mammal body that is being hacked by Instagram and all the things to trick you into consumerism and, and novelty addiction and all this stuff. And one of the, the steps isn't necessarily like a stern drill sergeant that's going to fuck you up and scare you. My practice is when I'm uncaring, unkind, angry, grotesque. I mean, yesterday I was just thinking about a culture. I won't say which one, but I was like, that, fucking, that culture sucks. Like Jewish. All Jewish. Okay. Keep going. No, no, I get it. I get what you're saying. It wasn't Jewish. Oh, okay. Now we're okay. Okay, fine. But it was it was just acid. Like it was just coming right. up. But I'm a I'm a judgment machine. I want coffee or I don't want coffee. Right. I'll do this or I don't. And it gets perverted into these extremes. So instead of what I used to do when I was a, a good evangelical boy was I would pretend like I didn't think that. Now right. I'm telling you I did. Mm -hmm. Because the practice is to go, there's my ego. 
it's do it's flaring up it kind of has the wheel right now i can't even really stop it because right. i'm in a fucking bad mood but there's a, the piece is found through not around you you meaning you recognize the behavior and you forgive it if you don't forgive it you'll project it and then i'll make you guilty and i'll hate you yeah. and i'll fuck you and i'll scapegoat you right. and you're the enemy and we'll kill and we'll right. steal and then we'll be back in a comedy club that's exactly <laughs> what we'd be doing back in a comedy club exactly yeah no that's why yeah. you quit yeah what we can't what is it what you don't oh it was richard Rohr. It's something like if if you don't stop it in you you'll push it out onto other right. people and that's just that's basic psychology but it's also basic spirituality what's unbearable and unforgivable in me i'll just assume other people are doing it and i'll hate them <laughs> because i think there's a part of me that's like god's gonna stump one of us but right. it's not gonna be me well that's interesting that the assumption that the other people uh, to even think to, that we know what other people are doing or thinking or how they're reacting you would love loving what is that's yeah. that's the whole thing yeah it's byron katie it's something called the work and and let's say you go like my dad doesn't understand me let you look at that thought the last step is called the turnaround and you go i don't understand my dad and you and you have to list five ways that's true yep talk about yeah willing humility like yeah like signing up to be humiliated yeah i would sign up for that Absolutely. you need to that's great in fact you can just jump yeah. to that one yeah i will i've already there's so much i don't understand about my dad that's not gonna be a much longer list or I'm not safe if my dad doesn't understand me. Yeah. That's a good one. Is that yeah. true? And you go, yeah. well, it's not true because I've been safe. True. Sure. Yeah. Oh, and we need to tell that to our, our child, our, right. our inner right. child and go, yeah. no, that's not true. Yeah. I've gotten They're, past all that uh, stuff now that I'm older and taking care of my parents in certain ways yeah now they're not safe if you exactly. don't exactly yeah, now i have to i have to show up uh our last little thing uh you've probably already done it because you've given us so much as uh, a moment of joy i've given so, so much you really have a moment of joy uh what's one thing that makes you happy that makes you that maybe we haven't talked about or something we've talked about i don't want to put pressure on you well, you know what's funny is um, I do find putting on things like Yacht Rock, Michael McDonald and stuff. So spiritual practice sounds so fucking right. serious. Yeah. I don't per se meditate. I used to. Now what I like to do is do whatever I'm doing, but just be that neutral eye, like just sink into it. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I like to do with that neutral eye is um, listen to Yacht Rock. Okay. And when you're listening to someone singing about a woman that they love and you consider briefly that the origin or the core or the essential nature of all of this, which you are ultimately, feels that way about you. This is very confusing. but you get into that frequency of that love and just listen to it. That's joy. I live in Ojai, so I'm going to drive 90 minutes okay. home. I'll listen to Yacht Rock and just try to get Pete as much out of the way right. as I can. And you're just smiling and it's some of the songs are silly. You want to hear something interesting? Matter. A guy recently t said to me that Micah McDonald's voice <laughs> is the worst, hor most horrible voice I've ever heard in my life. And I've never had this experience. I wanted to punch this guy in the face. Like I am the most passive ah! guy, in, but the fact that he hates Michael McDonald's voice no. made me want to kill him. Yeah, no, I understand. And strangle him. I was no, like, what, I understand. what's wrong? How can you not think that's a great voice? It's a great voice. Yeah. A and you know what, man? Entertainment is all surprise. And you think we're all supposed to sing like, be the my, like do it like it's <laughs> right. been done. Michael McDonald was like, no, I'm going to sing like this. I yeah. keep forgetting I'm not. And you're fantastic. like, I'm now being entertained. He's fantastic. No, well, you'd like right. Charlie Cogan. I'll listen to Charlie Cogan on the way up. Of uh, Charlie Cogan, okay. Charlie, Charlie Cogan. Uh, I'm, yeah, well, I'm, here's, the th here's yeah. really yeah. what I'm getting at. I don't particularly like or dislike Yacht Rock, but as an experiment, if you go into that, place where your opinions aren't invited mm -hmm. you can kind of enjoy anything and isn't that what yeah. we've been talking but about? i will literally i enjoy music of all kinds and yeah. so i will i can get into yeah i don't have to that's yeah. the wrong thing for me to no. test myself no. because yeah. i will like no or you're just i'll have you're already death there metal if i could listen to death metal on the way up to ojai and and be wait. that zen about it, then that then that would be a great test for me, me too to, to yeah. be honest yeah but to, to answer in a little we've just been so deep I, I, or you know whatever you want to call that lofty but i had um chicken and biscuit 
chicken and maple biscuit ice cream from Salt and Straw mm -hmm. at Disneyland? Yeah. It's pretty good. What the fuck is this ice cream? <laughs> I ate it and I was like, who who did this? Yeah. Yeah. I think it has chicken skin in it, <laughs> okay. which you think is disgusting. No, like fantastic. Fried. It was the fucking best. I think you can make chicken and biscuit anything. I agree. Good. It's my favorite food. Yeah. And in ice cream, I, I defiantly was like, can I try it? And I put it in my mouth and I was like, what's your biggest size? It was the greatest. Right. So that was, now we're just talking about good old fashioned yeah. momentary joy. Yep. It's not the great ice no. cream cone in the no. sky. Right. It is going to melt. Everything right. is, oh, with the Buddhist laugh because this table's already gone. Right. Sure. But that counts still. But that's it, what was a moment. And I watched my daughter hug Chip from <laughs> Chip and Dale. Right. Does she know the difference between Chip or Dale? Because well, I don't. he'll tell you with signs. Okay, good. Dale has the red nose, All I right. believe. I have no idea. And I went, and they bothered me. And like, Chip and Dale became. Male what? ding dongs. I guess I don't know what the hell. It's like, they're, yeah, they're what? What are they even from? Like they're they're a cartoon, but never entertained. Never entertained. Oh, I thought you were saying the Chippendales. Um, no. yeah, no Chippendale aren't aren't hot. And I'll I'll throw Goofy into the mix. Yeah, name one Terrible. time Goofy did anything for Nothing. you. Nothing. But I like Goofy because yeah. he's Goofy. Yeah, and he owns it. <laughs> he said the name Goofy. He wears the tiny hat. Well, I want to thank you for being here. I'm wrapping it up. This is my wrap up. Can't wait. Did I slide into it pretty good? All right. Like a pro. Um, uh. I'd like to thank my new friend, Pete Holmes. I'm okay. I'm jumping in on friend. I know it's a little early. If, it's if you were in front of me at the Arclight, yeah. and I was going to see Once we, Upon a Time in Hollywood, I'd we'd, go. We'd sit together. Jay? Well, actually, you'd sit with Conan, but you'd wave at me. That's what I'd sit with you. Uh, Pete Holmes, I'm, I'm so thrilled that you came here. So thrilled to talk to you. You did not disappoint. You are exactly who I hoped you'd be. You, you work in, 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 and your mind works in great ways, and you're, I'm, I don't want to say spirituality, but just the the goal of trying to be the kind of person that you're trying to be, mm. I aspire to that. And I get really nourished from that. Me too. So thanks for and that. And talking about it helps yeah, me. Yeah, me too. So this is that's awesome. And I really appreciate you being here. And you are you're you're fantastic. And Thank you're, you. You're invited back anytime. I appreciate although you never want to come back. But if you do No, I would love to. Okay. And the special is on Netflix, probably. When are you What's it roll? called? It's called I Am Not For Every Everybody. Okay. We will do I that. always want to say everyone. I am not for everybody. That's fantastic. Yeah. I'm a huge fan of your specials and your comedy. Thanks, man. And your uh and you made it weird podcast is so great. Thank you. Everything's good. Thanks, I'm not man. Uh, the Pete Holmes talk show. I gotta find that. Gotta you haven't find seen it? Not no. Oh, so I guess I'm not that little... big of a fan. And my Batman, there's new Batman videos on my YouTube. That's the other thing I saw to plug. Them. Yeah. Firing people? Yeah. Yeah, I saw them. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, really good. I'm anyway, thank you for being here. That's thank awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you for being here, listeners. I still don't know what to call my listeners. Uh, don't be a loners. Yeah, uh, don't be a loner. Don't be a loners. Thank you, don't be a loners. Oh, for... just call them loners. It's too... Hey, loners. Hey, loners. Yeah, loners. Yeah. Hey, loners. That's so sad. Maybe a loners. Hey, loners. No, nobody's alone. Don't be a loners. Hey, I, DBA I, holes? DB, DBAW. Debockers? Debockers? I don't know. Debockers. I don't know. I, anyway. Oh, Koganites. Koganite. Thank you, Koganites, for being here. Thanks for spending time with me. I enjoy spending time with you. And uh, if you take anything from this, is go out in the world and share something of yourself with somebody else so you're not alone. Shaboopy. Shaboopy. That's it. Don't be a